wonderful world of Disney. Fire on Kelly Mountain. It's all right, I'll get help. Max, now listen to me. Get out of there. day in the El Dorado National Forest, where vigilance was the constant watchword and fire, or its possibility, the common enemy. It had been a long, dry summer, and this area had seen no rain since early May. For the young lookout at Kelly Mountain, it was proving a very routine day. Nothing exciting ever seemed to happen in his neck of the woods. <laughs> Miss Quirley, I think your car needs a grease job. Remind me about the oil can. Squirrely, take a letter. Dear Mom and Dad, how are things back in Pittsburgh? What is it they say about the city? Nice place to visit, etc. Well, let me tell you, there's nothing as dull as the country. I don't think I've ever seen anything as boring as a tree. Well, take that down, Miss Squirrely. That's not a bad opening line for a poem. Young Phil Mallory was a summertime lookout for the Forest Service, and perhaps without realizing it, was trying to cope with the major occupational hazard of the job, boredom. Where'd I leave off, Miss Squirrely? Oh, yes, yes, uh, boring as a tree. Well, folks, my summer box score is practically zero. Total results of my heroic effort, one dead rattlesnake, three ferocious mosquito bites, rescued one baby bird, and uh, steered one stray hiker back to civilization. As for fires, not a single smoke. Clean slate, no score at all. Of course, I guess that's good, really. Not that I want the forest to burn down. I'm here to stop that. I'd just like to show old Georgie if a fire came up. I could handle it. I mean, here I am, a trained firefighter, and I find myself stuck off in the corner like a squirrel going round and round. Nothing personal, Miss Squirrely. What was really bothering young Mallory was the fact that the Vinegar Creek fire was reported out of control, and he wanted to be there. He wanted action. Well, Wowser, Bowser, Towser. Oh, Kelly Mountain isn't going to win any prizes for chills and thrills. Not this summer, anyway. Not Kelly Mountain, maybe. But 20 miles away, the Vinegar Creek fire was going full blast. <laughs> at Vinegar Creek continues unabated. I'm informed the figures now read 1,400 men fighting 30,000 acres along a 17-mile front. There is frantic action here, ladies and gentlemen, but no panic. In the midst of this seeming confusion, there's an organized effort going on. For firefighting is a large-scale and complicated business. I hope you can hear me in all the commotion. I've been advised that all campers in Green Valley 
have been told to get out while they can. The state highway is blocked below Carson. The fish camp is threatened, and three cabins have been lost at Bear Creek. I'm at the nerve center of this operation, the command post. Here's where the fire boss directs his forces like a general in a war. Indeed, firefighting is war. Yeah, yeah, Jorgensen here. I'm over at the Northwest sector, Jorgie. Good, that's where it's likely to spread. Don't send anybody into Cripple Canyon. Repeat, not a single man, you'll never get him out. Are you smoke jumpers coming in from the other side? Moon Ridge crew will be pulling back to the riverbed along sector four. Has anybody out there got good news? We certainly could use it. Herbie, make sure you keep somebody smart with the college boys on the North Fork. They don't know uphill from down, most of them. You got that? We don't want to, we don't want to get them trapped and their tails burned off. What am I running, a kindergarten? You're running a mother hen department, and don't you forget it. 72 hours without let-up for these men, and they're dog-tired. Behind me is first aid. There is the motor pool, the cook tents, and the sleeping quarters. The logistics for food alone are something to see. They're prepared to feed 2,000 men. This is one of the worst fires in the history of the state, ladies and gentlemen. This is nature at her fiercest. Jorgie, you there? I'm here. Where else? We've got our hands full. And if this thing slops over the gully, we can kiss Chair Point goodbye. Well, just, uh, just hang in there as good as possible. I'll send you help whenever I'm able. Dad, we're running pretty short on first aid stuff. I think I better get to town sometime today. Okay, honey, you better take a back road, though. Priest grade's getting pretty hot. Okay. Thank you, Jorgen. Jorgie, uh, just a minute of your time, please. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is Ed Jorgensen, District Ranger, the man who's in charge of directing the firefighting efforts here at Vinegar Creek. Jorgie, can you tell us a bit about your strategy in fighting this fire? Well, Steve, I can tell you about fire breaks that were outflanked by the blaze, or I can tell you about the Reverend Adams who was up here and told me he was going to put in a good word with the top man, then grabbed a shovel and went off with the next crew. Strategy, I, uh, I guess our best bet is over there. Those clouds above Kelly Mountain. Rain. So far, they don't show much cooperation in drifting this way. The clouds, their only real salvation. This even though every piece of equipment had been committed to the battle. Even though every able-bodied man for miles around had joined in the fight. Well, not every man. Phil Mallory was not in the fight. Wasn't even warming up in the bullpen. Nothing ever happened to Mallory. It can't be said there was nothing to do. He could supplement his three-day-old stew. He'd added carrots the day before and was about due for some onions. He could wash the lookout windows, which were supposed to be kept shiny clean. But who would know the difference? Or he could go fetch water, the highlight of his daily chores, Mallory called it. If he could just manage that beast the Forest Service provided for this necessity. The spring was two miles down the canyon, and every day without fail, Mallory dreaded the journey. I don't believe it. I mean, there's actually other life on this planet? You're mad. I've been going stir-crazy. You realize how long it's been since I've seen anyone? 
Well, I've been a little busy, and I have to get going. Look, I could use your help with Methuselah down there. His name is Monarch. Huh. Maybe 10 years ago. And haven't you learned to handle him yet? Ah, oh, the bees can smell the fumes from the steel mills on me. He's got the edge on a city kid. the uh, status of Vinegar Creek? Every time they think they've got the fire contained, it crowns out on them, or the wind picks up, or a hot spot flares. You name it. That fire's beating those men out there to a pulp. Well, I know a willing replacement. Of course, he's new to the job, but uh, he is industrious, enterprising, brave, thrifty, clean, reverent. As a matter of fact, he's an all-around good guy. I know you've been volunteering. Well, for all the good I'm doing here, I might as well phone the job in. That's not true. It's because of Vinegar Creek that your job's so important. If another blaze should start, heaven help us all. Yeah, I guess so. I just wish there's something I could do to help. There's the help we really need. Promises, promises. Oh, well, can I get you anything in town? Yeah, a book of crossword puzzles. Count your blessings, Phil Mallory. You've never even been to a fire. It's not exactly a picnic, you know. <laughs> Karen. Thanks. For the help with Methuselah. Okay. was the lookout's worst enemy, for every strike could mean danger. Zero, four, five. Zero, four, five. Max, this is Maori. I got a lightning strike, it's zero, four, five. What do you got at your point? Two thirteen, two one three degrees from my position. Two one three, got it, Max. I'll let Georgie know. Thanks. Bearing O four five by two one three. Yeah, I've got it. Now listen, Mallory, and listen close. This has to be checked out, and I don't have a man to spare, so I'm going to gamble on you. So I want you to pay attention. Oh yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You're green as grass, but you get on top of this fast, and you can handle it. Besides, it might be a false lead, dust from somebody on the road or something. So you check it out, okay? And you keep your wits about you. You remember what to take? Oh, yes, sir, you bet. In a flash, it all came back. The instructions in fire school. And remember, men, you might be staying a while, so let's hear that checklist again. One rope, 75 feet. One canteen, capacity four quarts. One ski rations. One walkie-talkie. Don't want you men getting lost out there in God's country, now do we? Oh, yes, sir. Uh, no, sir. One powdered eggs, got them. One bacon, right here. Call you when I get there, that's a promise, sir. And men, no animals. Take an animal to the fire, you'll end up fighting the animal instead of the fire. Animals need food and water and care. But Mallory had a better idea. 
The fire was how far? Six miles? Ten, maybe? With a horse, he could be there before it had a chance to really get started. That made good sense. This was Mallory's first fire, and he meant to do it first rate. Right? Right. caution against bringing animals to a fire would be borne out, though in a way Mallory couldn't have anticipated. So much for the horse. It would head back to the corral. Probably preferred to be there in the first place. The horse would be all right, but what about the equipment? Mallory to Jorgensen, Mallory to Jorgensen. This is Mallory, over. Mallory to Jorgensen, Mallory to Jorgensen. This is Mallory, over. about the radio? Not receiving, apparently, but sending? He couldn't tell. And he had no time to find out now. Best to just gather up his scattered belongings and get going. Canteen. He knew he'd need that. And the shovel and pickaxe. He'd certainly need those. And the dog? Forget about the dog. Unless he came back on his own. Where you been? Just missed all the action. the first time you find yourself facing some flames, you're going to want to get your tail out of there and call the fire department. Except you are the fire department. So take it step by step. Is the fire confined to grass and brush? If so, one man can control it, if he knows what he's doing. Fire will eat anything it gets a hold of, but it'll also eat itself. So concentrate on the perimeter of the blaze. Keep it from spreading, finding more fuel. Starve that animal to death. Remember the rule, control, then kill. Check and we're homeward bound. 
Mallory was justifiably proud. Yes, he was a city kid. And yes, some people took his shorthanded manner as being frivolous. But when the chips were down, Mallory was not found wanting. Well, back to the tower for us. I guess we'll welcome a little monotony. Boy, George Smith over at the upper port. Give them all the help you can. George, take it away. I've been phoning Kelly Mountain Tower all afternoon, not getting any answers. Any trouble at the smoke, he'd have called in. But I tried the radio, too. Nothing. Oh, honey, Mallory wouldn't be the first ranger to lose a piece of gear out in the field. Let's see what we can find out. Max, would you come in, please? Hi, Jerry. Max, listen, you've been keeping track of this Mallory situation. What's the story out there? Well, the kid had himself a fire, sure enough, but it's out now. Are you sure? Yeah, I've been keeping an eye on it. You know, probably thinking the same thing you are. If we had ourselves another blaze, what with every man on Vinegar Creek, we could kiss this forest goodbye. Well, he's not in his tower. Well, it's a hike and a half back to Kelly Mountain. I put him still on the road. What's your situation, Max? So far, so good. I got Lomita washed between me and your fire. A change in wind, and I could get my tail feather singed. <laughs> well, you take care of yourself, you hear? Sure will. As it turned out, Mallory wasn't quite on the road home, but he was about to be, when a strange thing happened. His fire wasn't as dead as he thought. Where the heck did you come from? Spot fires popping up everywhere. What had he done wrong? Or rather, what hadn't he done right? To say Maori was puzzled by these flare-ups would be an understatement, as it would be to say it presented him with a very serious problem. Maori had done everything correctly, controlled, then killed the fire. The original burn was out. So where was the fire coming from? Mallory could not leave, not with the potential for another blaze plane. That was common sense. It was also the first code of the forest rangers. You don't leave a fire until it's out or you're relieved. questions as to the origins of the mysterious fires of the day. Jorgerson at Fire Command. Come in, Jorgie, over. Now ready, Jorgerson, over. Jorgie, I'm just gonna have to pray this thing is transmitting and you can hear me, even if I can't receive you. What I got here, you'd probably be calling a little old situation. I need a chainsaw, Georgie. I got a snag I got to bring down, a 60-footer. Lightning shattered the thing, and inside the top is a bunch of smoldering material. It's live heat. It's like charcoal in a bucket giving off sparks. Hear me, Georgie, I need help. I got to have that saw. Now cross your fingers, they heard us, Bella. 
Mallory stayed put, even as darkness came on. There was little else he could do except continue his lonely vigil through the night. Meanwhile, Vinegar Creek raged on, out of control on all fronts. Fire never sleeps, but does its fiendish work both day and night. just below Saddleback Ridge. I'd say no better than yesterday, Georgie. No progress. All right, Hank, I got it. Look, I got a weather report that a big blow is moving in on us. That's just what we needed. I want you on the ground before this thing hits. Meteorology makes it an hour, maybe less. You have all the coordinates on that Mallory fire. Hour give you enough time for a look-see? Is he in trouble out there? No, he shouldn't be, but we can't raise him. I'll check and get back to you. As futile an effort as Mallory knew it would be, he had to try everything he could think of to bring down that snag by himself. But while the Pulaski was a valuable tool for clearing brush, it wasn't any heavy axe. Climbing this old timber to get at the live coals above was out of the question. All he could do still was wait and hope for help. By now, Mallory had been on the go for nearly 40 hours, driving himself without sleep, keeping a constant vigil. He hoped that somehow his message had got through to Georgie that Georgie was even now sending him a chainsaw. The snag must come down. It was the only solution. Bye. He hated to take time out, even for a drink of water, fearful that his fire would get away from him and run wild through the forest. Yet drink he must to keep himself going. Almost numb with fatigue, he was near the end of his rope. And yet he knew he must carry on with a single-handed battle. A battle with his own exhaustion as much as with the fire itself. He knew he must somehow stay awake. And the icy water helped. is coming up sooner than expected, so you better come on in. I'm on my way. As the spotter plane disappeared, 
So did Mallory's hopes for help. He was tired, nearly beaten by his ordeal. Yet he was back where he started, alone. Hank says your boyfriend is headed for home. So, okay? Okay. Any stray breeze could carry off sparks and get out of hand. The potential for another Vinegar Creek was plain, but known only to Mallory. troubles were about to get really out of hand. All animals tend to panic when fire hits the woods. But whether the bear was running for his life or Mallory's was a question too tricky to argue right now. Mallory chose retreat. <laughs> Instinctively, the bear took to the trees, then decided maybe that wasn't a good idea after all, if the forest was about to burn down. Confused, frightened, the bewildered bear lit out for distant parts. Any place but here must certainly be safer. Mallory got back to his fire. It had gained on him. And now every second counted. If the wind succeeded in pushing the flames into that stand of trees, it would spell Mallory's defeat. For the trees would explode into a giant torch then it would be Vinegar Creek all over again. But Mallory wasn't the only one with his hands full. Men were being brought in from other states to help fight the Vinegar Creek blaze. In spite of the magnitude of the force pitted against it, the fire raged on, out of control. Fire's crowned out and jumped on me to wash. Max! Now listen to me. Get out of there. I don't need an engraved invitation. That fire's galloping toward me like it had wings. It happened so fast. Max? Max? Max! Crown fire, the most deadly fire there is, hurling itself along across the top of a forest. Had Max managed to get out in time? No one knew. Let's get these trucks moving. Hey, Josh, break down all those tents over there. I want anything that's not in use or nailed down, moved out on the double. You men, come on, get that lid out. Get these gas cans on board. This could be our last report to you from this command post, ladies and gentlemen. Fireboss Jorgensen has ordered all to be made ready for a possible evacuation. Hey, Mitch, break down all those tables over there.
year to work, please. To be an angel. Yes, I made it. Ranger Jorgensen. Jury, uh, I wonder if you can tell us in plain language what gives. <laughs> what gives? A miracle gives. In plain language, the wind has shifted, changed direction 180 degrees. The wind is blowing the fire back on itself. Well, from the cheers, I guess that's a good thing, but uh, I'm not sure I understand. Well, you see, before the wind was blowing the flames into new timber, new fuel. But now it's being pushed into areas that have already been burned. No new fuel. No fuel, no fire. A tree can only burn once. Then does that mean the, the fire is contained, the danger is past? Oh, not by a long shot, but this is our first big break, you know, and now we might be able to make some headway if the wind holds. Thank you, Ranger Jorgensen. Well, you just heard it, folks. The first ray of hope. Dad. Thank you. Still no answer at Kelly Mountain. Hank! Mallory's fire was out, no question. The kid was home free and homeward bound. What are you waiting for? Go. But, but look, I mean, with Max's tower down and Kelly Mountain unmanned, we're blind through this whole section of the forest. And if a smoke should get started... Somebody's got to be at Mallory's tower. Would you rather I sent Josh? She'd have been there by now. Firebase 2. Faced with the extreme urgency of the situation, Jorgie called for the smoke jumpers, an elite cadre of firefighters who stand on call, ready to combat the most dire emergencies. They're the airborne troops of the Forest Service. They'll go anywhere, fast. Jorgie could only hope they'd be fast enough. <laughs> Sometimes a landing turned out harder than intended. Now one of the jumpers had actually put his chute in the fire and was himself in some danger. With the wind knocked out of him, he needed a helping hand.
Our Belgium down to the North Ridge with the tools, right? All right, Frank. Okay, boy. That's that. That's me. Five feet. Take it easy, Frank. It was Mallory's fight. Had been for two days and nights. After a moment's consideration, the smoke jumper leader decided he would have been surprised if Mallory had let anyone else finish his battle. Control now, no sweat. Darn near missed, though. But what happened out there? Well, the kid got himself a lightning struck snag, shooting off sparks like Vesuvius every time the wind would blow. Judging by the burn I see around here. You can get a blow by blow from Mallory back at the tower. That's where we're going to be taking him once he brings that timber down and we bury the thing. I'll see you there. I guess a pat on the back is more than do that, kid. Yeah, the kid deserves it. Regular sleeping beauty. Now, what about Vinegar Creek? Vinegar Creek is mostly a few hot spots. Men down there mopping up. I'll tell you straight, that's due in no small part to you, Mallory, for buying us time and preventing another Vinegar Creek. Max's tower burned, but he's all right. Oh, wow. You can put that call through now, operator. As it was, that fire of yours chewed up a sizable hunk of real estate. The Mallory burn is officially recorded at just over 13 acres, all totaled. Mallory burn? Yeah, the Mallory burn. The Forest Service identifies any burns over 10 acres. Some joker at cartography thought the name appropriate. I concurred, even though I knew it was another case of you doing anything to avoid lookout detail. So now you're famous. You're a celebrity. Your window's dirty. Your party is ready. Go ahead, please. Oh, it's your folks. They've been calling. We've got them hooked up on Forest Service radio. Hello, Mom. Dad, how are you? How are you is more the question. We've been deluged with calls from reporters since the other day. Reporters? You made the papers back here. Local boy makes good. To read the articles, you single-handedly saved California. Didn't know we had a hero in the family. Hero? Just happened to be me that got stuck with a job. What modesty. No Mallory to the rescue? Well, I'll be back to myself any time. I guess I sound a little tired. I guess you're sounding a little older. Phil? Phil, are you still there? Rain! Rain, rain! It's raining, Mom! Mom, I'll call you back later!
Spain marked a time of rejoicing. The forest was safe from the threat of fire for another year. For the men who called the forest their charge, for the men of the Forest Service, and for Phil Mallory, it meant their job was done, and well done indeed. 